We've been uh, talking about the believer's authority, and uh, today we are going to continue forward in our learning, in our study on the subject of the believer's authority. That is part three in the seven series. Just to quickly review what we have uh, shared so far, uh, we we mentioned or we outlined five dimensions of our spiritual authority. Number one was our redemptive authority, our authority because of what Christ has done for us, the redemptive work. Number two was inherited authority, our authority as sons and daughters of God. Thirdly, which we discussed last Sunday, uh, we spoke about positional authority, our authority as seated at the right hand of God in Christ Jesus. Today we're going to look, we will look at number four, which is delegated authority, our authority as representatives of Christ. What we observe in the ministry of Jesus, of course, is when he began his ministry and he began preaching the gospel of the kingdom, announcing the good news of the kingdom, he went about doing good and healing people, delivering people, working wonderful miracles and, and all of that. But then we also notice that there came a point in his ministry after he had gathered together the 12 disciples, the apostles, he turned around to them. And as we read in Matthew 10, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. He gave them power. When you and I want to exercise delegated authority, it's in His name. There is no work of Satan that you as a believer don't have authority over. Uh, well, uh, that authority, that supernatural ability was only meant for the early church in order to establish the church. Now, theologically, you would call these people cessationalists. That means they believe that supernatural working of God in the church ended when the last apostle died. So they are cessationalists, or technically many evangelicals are cessationalists. They say this, it, that supernatural working, casting out demons, healing the sick, and all those miraculous abilities ceased when the last apostle died. So with, it was meant only for the first century. But how illogical is it? Because what does the rest of the New Testament say? And I'll just mention three things. Number one, Matthew 16, 18, and 19. He said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth, and I'm just you know, paraphrasing it, uh, the literal Greek says, you bind on earth what has been bound in heaven, and you release on earth what has been released in heaven. So the church has been authorized. To whom did he give the keys of authority? To the church. Another example would be um, Matthew 28, 18 to 20. The Great Commission. We love it. Jesus said, all authority is given unto me in heaven and in earth. And then he turned around to us and he said, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. Teach, and then notice what the instruction is. Teach them to observe everything I have commanded you. Or a third one, which we are going to look into, is Mark 16, 17 and 18. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So notice what Jesus said. These signs will follow those who believe. In my name. So the authority is in the name. It's in that name. And are we using that name today? Yes. So therefore, that name will do or will cause all these things to happen. Let's try to understand very quickly, what does it mean uh, to use that name and how, what can we do with it? A few things. So 
What are some ways to exercise this authority? Just a few simple keys before we close. We exercise this authority by the words we speak. You know, we must learn to speak words of authority. Now, three simple ways that we're going to look at very quickly. Number one is to resist. That means you're exercising authority to protect and prevent. You're resisting. Secondly, you can bind, lose, or pull down. These are all action that you take with words of your mouth. You can bind, lose, and pull down. Or third, you can cast out, which is you're exercising authority to advance. So what we are learning here has very practical application in all of our lives. If you don't exercise your authority, then you're wasting something that God has given to you.